making a life worth living and a retirement worth having is openly about what we do to project ourselves into this world. It's how we utilize our marketing. It's how we handle ourselves. It's really about what we do in this world to help other people to go further in life, to throw the ball longer, to literally get <clears throat> further on in the sport game of life. Now, if I'm using sports metaphors, it doesn't really matter. But the reality is what we're talking about is that the game of life is something that we all want to win in. But how do we win in the game of life? How do we produce a life worth living in return and having that's so full of magic that we can't get over how much God loves on us? And in my situation, I've been following my own spirituality of sorts, my own belief in the Lord of heaven. And in real truth, I've had much more magic in my life since following this faith and learning something that I've now been producing on my own from a woman that I love very much. She showed me basically an old-fashioned pendulum. And from that point on, I started to make my own faith bombs. And in that regard, I make very creative faith bombs that speak to the soul of different individuals who are going to be coming into my path. I have a prime example of that. The other day, I put together an old <clears throat> Hello Kitty that was in a samurai, basically, garb from Japan. And I literally turned that into a faith bomb. And within that same very day that the Lord said, do this, I sold that faith bomb. It produced for me money in order for me to have food on the table that I needed to have. And that's what happens. Another aspect of the faith bob is how the faith bob can help you to lose weight. That's kind of an unusual situation, but in my case, I simply eat what I'm directed to eat. And in doing so, I get two things. The first thing I get is a much leaner body. The second thing that I gained, of course, was the loss of 12 pounds off my waist, or excuse me, 12 inches off my waist. But the third thing, or the second thing, which however you want to count it up, and I'm numerically challenged, is that in reality, I gain a lot of help in terms of finding things on sale. You see, I could walk into a place and decide, I'm going to eat this, I'm going to eat that, I'm going to eat that, but it may not interact with the other foods that I've eaten earlier in the day as well, unless I submit it all to God. At the same time, I can walk in and think, oh, I'm going to buy this brand today, and then discover by using my Fade Fob that there's another brand that offers the exact same product, but it's much cheaper, allowing me to save money. These are the benefits of having a faith in the Lord in heaven that you want to help you predict and produce a life worth living and retirement worth having. Now, my faith fob is literally a trademark of my company, Blaze Communications LLC, which is soon to be moving into a different name, I believe. I've had a lot of people interfering with my telecommunications. I've had a lot of people deleting my emails and getting into my voicemail and things like that. So we're going to stop that as soon as we possibly can. But I might be producing a new business. I might be going into something else entirely that I feel led and called to do. And that's sort of what happens in life. I've seen a lot of the local leaders in technology who stepped away from what they were doing after 10 some years and went into something else. They went to work for a non-for-profit. When they came back, they did something else. And that's what we do in life. We produce new lives. We produce new transitions in our careers. And we literally do what we feel led and called to do. That is, in essence, how the soul is led in this world, is it not? But for me, I utilize my faith on a gift of information that a loving friend showed me how to utilize. And it literally has led me through so many places, it's not even funny. I can literally get just about anywhere without GPS or a telephone or Google Maps or any of those typical technology tools that people use. But at the same time, I literally can find the things that I need to find. Every inch of clothing that I have at this time in my life was produced by that faith fob and my faith in God saying, help me to find what will look good on me now. Help me to find the clothes that will be appealing to the right people. Help me to find the clothing that I need to fit and um, create an affinity with others in a community that I'm traveling to. And in every single instance, it's totally proven itself. Now, that's what happens when you submit it all to God. When you submit it all to God, when you have a way to check yourself, when you have a way to check those voices that we you know, kind of joke about since childhood, about that you've got an angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other. Well, in truth, we do sort of have that. But in reality, if you want to produce the result that God is wanting for your life, then you have to be willing to submit it all to God. And that means every single decision, from the time that you get up to the time that you go to bed. And it's really quite magical. It's an adventure then in life. It's not just a rote, every day I'm doing the same thing. Well, in truth, when we have careers and we have jobs and we have employments or we have companies, we are sort of doing the same things in life, but it allows us to meet new people. It allows us to check ourselves. It allows us to find new opportunities in life. And it totally allows us to go much further in life because we know that God is preparing us for something grander. And he might be actually marketing us into the right people's lives that we so desperately need for our careers to launch, to jump off, to get somewhere really significant because in our lifetime, we have to produce enough income in the work that we do for however long we choose to do it in order to produce a retirement that will care for us in old age. Now, I talk a lot about that a lot 
As I always joke, I am no financial planner. I'm sure there's some great financial planners in the community, and I've met a handful. But the reality is not everybody likes to talk to a total stranger about their finances. They feel humbled. They feel shy. If they've got a lot of money, they're worried about theft and other things. If they don't have a lot of money, they're worried about how they look to people. But in reality, if you submit things that you're looking for, if you submit all that you're looking for in life to the Lord, you might just find the exact perfect mate, the exact perfect piece of clothing, the exact perfect gift for someone else, the exact perfect food to prepare for guests coming to your house by doing so. By literally saying, I want to love on some other person, so I'm not taking me into the equation, I'm actually taking me out of the equation. I'm saying, Lord, where is my path today? And I have to tell you, since I've done that, I've gone through a lot of amazing experiences. I've seen beautiful sunrises, I've seen deers in the forest, I've seen all sorts of nature that I would have never noticed before if I was just hustling and bustling down the road. But if I listen, if I truly meditate like Jesus did, if I really listen to what God wants for my life, it's an incredible experience. Now, in life, we have moments of time to make a difference for someone. We have moments of time to approach someone and say, hey, how are you doing today? That sort of thing happened to me earlier today, and it was sort of interesting because I barely remembered the face of the girl who was talking to me, but she reminded me of how we had seen each other before, and I was reminded. I remember feeling in my soul, this is a good young person. This is a friendly person. This is a caring person. Just by how she greeted me and how she said, it's too cold to be outside. Please come in from, from the outside. It doesn't matter if you purchase one little thing right now. We're happy to have you in our in our establishment. And that's the incredible amount of customer service that people, people can play. There are other men and young women who are literally in positions because they need the money for their job, for their cars, for their house, for their lives, for their rent. But they're not really doing the best job they possibly could. I literally just went through an experience of a particular organization that's huge in this community. It's got multiple locations. It's a large conglomerate of a shop. But in truth, their people are not always 100% engaged in being that customer service liaison for that company. But when you push on somebody a little bit who's of good soul, they will usually rise to the occasion. And that's what I did. And I found that I could purchase something that I wanted to eat without spending big bag of money for a huge name brand, and I pretty much got the same flavored product. Now, when I talk about faith, Bob's, I'm talking about something that I have literally created. It is not something new. It's a old-style religion. It's been around since the Druids, which was something that happened in the world in terms of spirituality and religion far before the Catholics took over and took in a lot of their practices and brought that into Christianity and everything that we believe in in our faith. A lot of the practices and rites that we have come from those old nature-oriented Mother Earth oriented ways. But the true magic of the Lord is still present in the world. The only difference is whether or not people are wise enough, mature enough, and open enough to see it, to feel it, to experience it. And I can tell you, it's a marvelous experience. And I'm someone who doesn't have a lot right now. I'm in a modest situation, I'm in a humble situation. But you know what? The magic that I experience every single day is beyond worth the experience that I'm going through, the struggles, the challenges. And it's a great growing and learning experience. Now, in your life, if you're not finding everything you're looking for, if you're not finding the right faith for yourself, the truth is that God honors a lot of different faiths because he created them all. We know this from the Tower of Babel discussion in the Bible and other literature and historic works that talk about religions and how they evolved, anthropological studies, if you will, and anything that's been well thoroughly researched. But my point is that you can have a faith that believes in a God that practices different cultural aspects that speak to your soul and still be a holy person. Look at the Dalai Lama. He's probably one of those holy men that we know. He speaks multiple languages. The way that they choose him at an early birth uh, and childhood is fascinating in itself. And it's amazing. They believe in reincarnation. And I believe there's probably a little bit of that that goes on for people as well. But that doesn't matter to you as it, as it matters to me. But my point is that you can use a faith bomb to produce a higher love of the Lord with it but at the same time, a magical lifestyle that allows you the things that you're looking for, meeting the people that you should naturally along your path by following that order. And that's all I'm talking about. I'm talking about how do you find out what God in heaven has planned for your life if you're too busy playing around with your telephone and not really listening to what's going on in the spirit world around you. So many people miss out on their life partners because they use the wrong skill sets to find a partner. They don't find the right person that God has planned for them. They go through a situation, they're with them a short time, and then it all falls apart. Then in a rebound, they find the wrong person, or they make the mistake and they push off the person that God had put in their life that they so need. I've seen that happen many times. I've seen women get second husbands, but they're really not the perfect match for them. 
They might provide them in all sorts of materialistic ways, but it's not literally what the God has put forth for them. So in life, we have moments of time to tell people the truth, and that is literally the truth. Now, can I prove it? Sure. If I was given a television show, I could absolutely prove it. I could say, let's follow me and see where God leads us today. I could have any person in the car that would make sense to be along with me, as long as they're a kind person, as long as they're not uh, immoral in some regard. And what I mean by that is that they actually have a love and a curiosity about God. And then we would go literally where the Lord would want us to go. And that's sort of a suggestion I'm having. And I'm putting out there and saying, here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to have a little TV show that goes on cable or that goes on internet, that goes on YouTube or goes on <clears throat> any of the online channels that are out there, Hulu, whatever, sponsored by a handful of companies that are loving companies that want to believe in a faith, no matter what it turns out to be. And what I really need in life is a vehicle because my vehicle got stolen literally from me by police by sticking an impound and having it in there for so many days that I can even, cannot afford to get it out. And at this point, it's been so monkeyed with by the folks in impound and everyone else that I just don't want it back. I need to have a vehicle that is safe, that is sound, that's old school, that's old fashioned, that works based on mechanics, not all this electronic crap that can be overridden by somebody who's got a technology degree. I'm looking for that old style kind of family van, that family camper, that no pop-ups, please. I'm too old to be climbing up into something like that. But in reality, I have a dream, and I have that dream right now. But I want to produce for myself that opportunity. I also have several things I've been working on since I've gone through this transition. You see, when you don't have something to do every single second of the day, your mind and its creative abilities can totally flow. It can totally move itself into something amazing. And I've written a play about a particular life, and I've also written a movie of sorts. And all those scenes keep coming to me every single second of the day. The hard part is trying to get it all written down. Because when you have somebody hacking your computer, interfering with your telecommunications, you don't want to put it all out there because you don't want it swiped and stolen. You don't want your intellectual property removed from your rights of having it. Because everybody has a creative spirit. Everybody has a creative soul. It's just a matter of not whether or not we're going to produce for ourselves something with regard to that assistance that we gain from heaven and above. Now, I guess what I'm really looking for is some sponsorships. On my website, if it's still out there, I have a list and litany of sponsors that I'm looking for. One sponsor that I'd like to add to the list is PetSmart because I think it's important in the world to have a canine companion of sorts. And I'm sort of looking for that perfect dog for me that's hyperallergenic and that's kind of a mid-sized dog and that openly is going to be something I get from a puppy that I can raise that will be loyal to me. But I'm just talking about real life. So I think you have to have a company that understands those type of things and those capabilities of animals. And I think PetSmart might be a good company to have along for the ride. But I'm just talking out loud. Now, there's other people in my life that I'd like to meet because I think they're lovely in their souls. It doesn't have anything to do with what level of lifestyle they're living at or where they live or if I've even been to that area of the world and taken photographs of huge famous houses. For all I know, I could have photographed their house. But sadly, a lot of that photography has been swiped from my home and I'm trying to get my property back. You see, we have this little situation going on in America and across the land and across the world probably that says if someone has something and you like it, you can just go pluck it from them. And that's not true. It is illegal. It is illicit. It is immoral. And we need to really work on that in this world. We really need to look at it. how do we produce a life worth living and return it with having without ruining the opportunities of other people. We do that by making sure that all our services are quality. We do that by making our products of the highest standard and caliber that will last. A lot of companies have created a longevity for themselves because they make products that only last a certain length of time. They might time out or they might literally self-destruct on a program after a year or so, so the person has to buy another one. And that's something we should really look into in terms of not only the morality of making someone buy something over and over again, but also in terms of the economy itself. Is it wise to have junkyards full of stuff that could literally be repaired? So that's something we want to really look at because as we grow, as we age, as the nation continues to go through its phases and its stages, we have to decide what are we going to have in our, in our landfills and what is it going to be doing to our environment and where we produce our food. Now something I'd like to talk briefly about is the folks who work in retail who handle our food, that they are some of the most honorable people in the world is what I wish them to be. I'd really like them to be honorable because in truth they are producing for us the care of our bodies. By handling our food and we're entrusting them to do that, we're literally saying, you I'm honoring with my respect, my regard, my resources, but my trust of allowing you to handle my food that I'm going to put in my body. And that is something that we've sort of lost the interest in as a nation. It's foolishness. 
we also need to make sure we have farmers coming out of elementary school and heading towards that path in life. There's a wonderful uh, film out there, I believe it's called Virgins or Convergence or something like that, with one of the, um, the leading ladies of the day and, and men of the day in it, where literally they're sending people off to different groups and different educational stints to know what is best for them and how they can either protect the land or uh, grow things on the land or do things medically or do things intellectually in terms of government. And we need to start having those type of practices too. But I'm just throwing out ideas. That's what we do in this channel. It's authentic conversation, if you will. It's authentic ideology. It's kind of innovative ideas in a way. And in truth, as a marketer, as an uh, audiophile or an audiocaster, I'm literally trying to put out there things that someone would go, hey, I've never heard anything like that before. That's new. That's different. I'd like to try some of that. And what's interesting is I tend to be that early adopter. The things that I launch, all of a sudden some of the big name gurus that I've interviewed in my podcast start to do. They may do it a little better because I can pay someone to do all the high-tech stuff. And I'm getting lazy in my age that I think, that, you know, when people are listening to something like the radio, they're not watching anything on a television. And that's the advantage of an audio cast and a podcast that's handled on a video channel. It can literally play on your phone and it can play through your computer while you're working. But it doesn't require you to keep watching and it doesn't require someone to spend hours upon hours upon hours to put together high-class quality images that flash at you every two seconds, which you won't remember a little way longer. What we remember tends to be the stories of people's lives. And I can tell you that a faith fund can make for you some of the most marvelous experiences of not only in what you do to help other people and how you serve them and determining what the right price is to charge them and whether or not they can afford it, but also helping them to find the gifts of the spirit that they're supposed to discover. Now, this has been Blake Ensign of Blaze Communications, LLC. In other words, The Soul Keepers, if you will, which is the name and title of my book. And at some point, I hope that you'll have a chance to read it as it gets better and better with every revision. So thanks for listening, and I hope you're having a marvelous, wonderful day.